So I'm Jocelyn, this is Yvonne, this is One Thing. Um, so recently when I meet my clients, right, uh, mm. I keep hearing this question from them. Where to stay, where to live when they sell their property? Yeah. So uh, a very common question because most of my clients actually thought that they have to always rent a place when they sell their property. Um, not necessarily so. And the answer to this question would be always managing timeline. So about of the whole client that we are, we are actually facing, right, is that maybe HDB to HDB upgraders? HDB buying an EC, HDB buying yeah. a private. Mm. So all these timelines are very different. So today we're going to share um, all of them. Mm. So in this case, I have been handling a lot of clients who have been buying and selling HDB. Um, and at the same time, we have to manage the process simultaneously. Correct. So it is important to take note that there is this 21 days OTP uh, when we issue it mm -hmm. and when we exercise it. So after 21 days, it will lapse mm -hmm. and then we have to do the whole process all over again. So after the buyer or the seller, um, after this 21 days, they actually can do a HD, they will have a HDB approval of four weeks, then completion of eight weeks. So this whole process takes about three to four months. Mm. Yeah, so you're saying that mm. the whole HDB buying process or selling process takes about three to four months, right? Yeah. Ah, okay. okay. But because we're doing them simultaneously, right? Mm. So um, during this selling period, the buying process can take place. Okay. It can be contra when the buying and selling is completed at the same time. Mm. But only one party can do that. So when one party is doing that and the other party cannot do contra, there are still other ways to go about doing it. So, hmm. But how does it match up? Because you say that the selling takes about 4 months and then the buying takes about 4 months. Mm. So that means in, be in between there will be a lapse period, right? That means in between I'll have no house to stay? Uh, okay, so that's why if I'm, let's say I'm, sell I'm serving mm. the seller. So when I sell the place, I will concurrently have to find a buying of the mm. next unit. Mm -hmm. So that this 3 to 4 months actually um, concurrently actually, uh, what? You match it together. Mm -hmm. Basically, you complete the transaction at the same time. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I recently have a case we didn't complete almost at the same time, but we manage it in a way whereby the money comes in and the money goes out at the same time. So mm. you don't need to touch the cash mm. at all. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's just that during this whole process, right, we need to be very particular with the buyer profile if you are selling a unit. Yep. And then you need to take note of your seller requirement if mm. you are serving the buyer. Then, because you are serving the client both buying and selling at the same time, right? Because if you are selling, you need to take note of the buying mm. buyers who come in to buy your place. And then when you are, you are buying, you need to take note of the selling the seller profile mm. when you are buying for your client. So basically what you are saying is in one transaction, there can only be one contra party, right? Yeah. So, uh, and the, old, the contra party can ask for extension. So the other parties cannot ask for extension. Basically, it's a very complicated process. <laughs> so it is. It, it sounds, is. It sounds so confusing to me already. <laughs> <laughs> cannot. <laughs> but it will be easily managed if you Correct. if we know how to manage the timeline. So mm. so long as we have someone managing it, you don't have to worry so much. But just know that there is a way that mm. that we, we can, can do it. Right? Yes, do correct. it. We can do it without even yep. touching your cash saving. We can do it without you renting as well. Correct. Yep. Yep. So, of course, we have another group of HDB upgraders uh, who will seek to buy an EC. Yep. So, even what do you think um, they had to take note then? Okay, so for buying an EC, right, firstly, we need to know that EC, there's two different types of payment scheme. Mm. One is a normal payment scheme, another one is called a deferred payment scheme. So, today, if you are a HDB upgrader looking to upgrade to an EC, I think number one is uh, you have one. Well, the one question is you have to ask whether you have a place to stay. If you don't have, most of the HDB upgraders will go for the option of deferred payment scheme, mm. meaning at the time of the purchase they only pay twenty percent down payment, and upon TOP, means like three to four years later when you collect your keys, then you have up to six months to sell your HDB. But to do so, right, the financing part you have to be strong in the sense that you must have enough down payment for the twenty percent. Then um, let's say you, if you don't have enough and most of your funds are still stuck in your CPF in your current HDB, right? Then you need to take this thing called the bridging loan. So to be eligible for bridging loan, this 
is where um, we always will help our clients to do our loan eligibility together with bankers and staff to check whether or not you have the amount of money. Otherwise, the upfront down payment is cash. So this is super important if our clients are doing a uh, deferred payment scheme. Normal payment scheme means that you are just uh, your first down payment is 5%. Within uh, 9 weeks, you will pay the remaining 20%. And then after that, subsequently, your loan will start when it's continue, when it's building. Then um, another group of buyers will choose to go for deferred payment scheme where it's usually 3% higher than normal payment scheme. But what the advantage that they have is they don't have to sell their place first. They can still choose to stay in their HDB until it TOPs. And then they have um, they have up to six months from TOP date to sell their house. Mm -hmm. So to do that, right, deferred payment scheme will require a 20% down payment. Then the remaining 80% will be three to four years later when you collect your fees. Mm -hmm. However, for deferred payment scheme, right, the important thing to know is that today most of your, if you're a HDB owner, right, most of your CPF funds will be stuck in your HDB. So how? You will need to take this thing called the bridging loan. Bridging loan basically will bridge the amount of CPF that you have in your current HDB to pay for the condo. But to do that, bridging loan requires a certain calculation and you also must see how much you can loan up to plus your current loan amount. So if it's not enough, do take note that your upfront uh, down payment of 20% might potentially be in cash. Uh. So these are the calculations that you have to uh, properly calculate it. So, uh, but however, if you're upgrading from HDB to a EC, uh, there are different ways of managing the timeline which uh, you should find out more if it's pertaining to your situation and what what is your finances like before even purchasing one? Mm. 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 That's right. Then there's another group that recently that we always serve it's those who are upgrading to a condo, right? Mm. One thing, I know you have been serving a few of this kind of clients. <laughs> yes. Can you share more with us how to plan their timeline? Well, I think for clients that is upgrading to condo, right, the timeline is so much more flexible as compared to an EC and a HDB. Mm. Because I, I think if today, right, you're in a very tight time frame, right, I think private, I, I mean, of course, if budget matches, I think uh, private is uh, something that you can look into because, um, you know, like for private, the completion can be as fast as two and a half months to even as long as like four months or even more. Mm. So I think this is, this, um, this gives our buyers a lot of flexibility in terms of planning their, um, you know, like the movings and everything. Because I mean, like it's not like today you you com you complete the sale of your HDB and then tomorrow you'll be able to uh, move into the new house without yep. you know, like your furnitures and everything. Yeah. So I think this provides a little bit more flexibility, lah. But the thing is, um, for private property, right? Um, something to note about the buyer stamp duty, which is quite different from uh, EC as well as uh, HDB, is that for buyer stamp duty, you have to pay in cash first. That is referring to resale, resale properties. Correct, yeah. of course. Yes, so for resale properties, you will uh, resale private properties, yeah? you will have to pay the buyer stamp duty in cash first, and then only then upon, uh, after completion, it will be reimbursed back to your, uh, it will be reimbursed back by the CPF Right? Am I right? Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah. So just make sure that you have enough or rather sufficient cash for the buyer's stamp duty because you know, like you don't want to, you know, get into the situation whereby you go to the law firm and then you realize that you don't have enough cash. Mm. Yeah. And also not to mention for new launch and resale, there are very different timelines that we are working with. So please check with a professional first before you proceed to make any purchases because I don't I don't want any of you guys to be living under the bridge for like the next few <laughs> 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 yeah, correct. Well, they can always run. <laughs> True that, but then, but because like, I, I think the last, the last few episodes we were saying that um, the rental market is really crazy mm -hmm. hot right now. Yeah. So I think even wanting to find a unit is difficult. Yeah, correct. That's most of the stress that what people are facing yeah. right That's now. That's why we have this episode of Managing Timeline. Yes. Correct. So, you know, like then the next alternative, if you can't find a, a, a rental unit, right, would be to set up a, a camp, a tent. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good way to wake up. It's all natural. Wake up to okay. the stars. Yeah. When you are there, please take a video and show it to us. Oh yeah, right. So one question for you guys. Do you think that um, our buyers should sell first or should they buy first? Oh, good question. Which because today, question? I mean like if today I 
see a unit I like, mm. but I have not start marketing the uh, as in my house, mm. I might potentially lose out on this unit that I really like, right? I can yeah. share on the HDB market if yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. So um, I actually when we have viewings for my unit, right? Um, there are people who have not sold their place and they want to buy my place. Uh, very risky. I, I don't highly recommend because then that's where your timeline will matter. Remember yeah. when completion, your money comes into your CPF, right? And then you're buying, your money will be taken out of your CPF. If you're buying first, you have to ensure your CPF and your cash are sufficient. Hmm. If not, then I'm not sure how you're going to go about purchasing <laughs> it in the first place. But what if you see a house that you really like? You know, I like really, really like that house, but it might be mm. sold by the time you see it. Exactly, house. exactly. So this is what I always share with mm. my viewers who have not sold their place mm. because in this current market, houses OTP just flying all over yeah. the place. Whenever my buyer actually wants something, one week later they think about it. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> the OTP is issued. I don't think you even need one week. Probably like seventy. Maybe seventy-two hours. You'll be like, yeah, it's yeah, true. Maybe, it's true. maybe if that unit <laughs> yeah. is very very yeah. popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really don't recommend. Um, it's a very risky move. Mm. That's why buying my recommendation to all my clients is always buying and selling should happen simultaneously. Mm. Yeah, mm. worry free. Um, so far, my clients are not worried about paperwork and what's not. They just need to be updated mm. via a group chat. Mm, I'm not going to jinx it. Mm. So far, so good. So I think that question will matter more. Okay, so if it's EC, if you're upgrading to an EC, there's no buyer stamp duty because there's no ABSC because naturally you have to sell your first house. If you're upgrading for an HDB and buying a condo and then you want to buy first, you have to take note. So long as you never find a buyer for your HDB, right? And when you exercise, that means you give the 4% and stamp duty at the law firm's office for your condo, you will be taxed with additional buyer stamp duty. Okay? And that in the today's market, right, Singaporean buying second property would be 17%. Mm. So this also means that you must sell your first home within six months of purchasing your condo. And within the six months, let's say if you don't sell it, then you will not be able to get back your ABSD. Mm. Yeah. So basically, am I right to say that you have to pay for the ABSD upfront first before yes. you can get the reimbursement? Yes. Yeah. So you're gonna have to be uh, cash cash ready first. Yeah. Mm. But just to add on to uh, mm. one thing concerned just now, mm. which is a very valid concern because some of my actually uh, seller, mm. what if uh, I sell my place but I haven't seen any house that I like? Mm. I think that is one of their, oh, yeah, their really. concern as well. There's a lot of my clients' concern. They can't find anything yeah. at all they, that they like in the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and back to your question whereby three months selling, three months buying, how mm. can it match, right? Um, actually, we, that's how we play the timeline, but that's how we manage the timeline in a sense whereby we actually give one month or so for my seller to look for a place mm. while yeah. they're selling their place. Yeah. Mm. So all this has been taken into consideration. Um, and if you really want to know more, you really have to look for a professional to really plan for you mm. because then that's mm. where we really can sit down and plan um, according to your needs and your timeline, your requirements and what's not. Correct, mm. correct. I think a lot of our, I, I believe a lot of our buyers in the market, they they will prefer to, to you know, like DIY, do it themselves. You know, like because, yeah, actually uh, there's yeah, a lot in the market because, right now. Because, you know, like you get the flexibility of taking as much time as you need, but you have to be sure of your timeline yep. and just make sure that, you know, like all your payments and your payouts and everything, um, you Matches. know exactly how it pay, uh, you know, like when is the time that it pay, your CPF, I mean, if you're using any, that it pays back into your account so that you can use it for your next purchases. That's right. Because if all this does not come in time, <gasps> Uh, so what can do, I say? To, to share, <laughs> I have a personal <laughs> case study that I just encountered. So same thing like what you say, mm. DIY clients, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they went to purchase and then I only got to know them after they purchased. Mm-hmm. So now that I'm in the picture, I was being told to faster, faster sell the price, uh, sell their unit at mm-hmm. a high price above the market transaction. So because the timing for their CPF collection and, and monies will be up within within a certain number of period of time, right? Like eight weeks. Mm. So, but there's no way to complete the transaction. So we mm. even have to write up to authorities to help. So for this kind of trouble, right, it's really a hassle for the couple mm. and even more stressful for us. 
<laughs> because I think it's very nerve wracking. Everybody stressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very nerve wracking. Yeah, so we usually don't recommend this kind of things, and we are mm. very particular in terms of timeline planning. So correct, make correct. sure you do all your homework first, and correct. we see all your numbers first before we even take any action. Otherwise, right. that is always our priority when we plan for yes. our clients. So always the timeline first, yeah. and then anything else after that. Yeah. yeah, correct. So okay. actually, actually, you know, like um, buying a house, I thought quite easy. <laughs> but then, you see, are you speaking like, from which position? Uh, <laughs> last time before I became an uh, agent, <laughs> I always thought buying a house is just buy, like buy and sell. <laughs> like I want to sell, then I just sell. Yeah. Then maybe like by the next uh one two, two two months, I should get a house off my off my back. Mm. Then I can move move on to the next one. But some people even ask me, I, can I get my house within one month? Yeah. I'm like, no, it doesn't really? work this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as you know, I mean, like after all our sharings, I think you should know by now. There's really so much more. Mm. That, uh, Involved. Yeah, correct. And also, what can be, and also, I think some of these processes also can be found online. Yep. It's not like some processes you can Google it out, you know. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. correct. So. So to sum up today's episode, why we really want to talk about this is because mm. so far, whatever cases that we encounter, mm. right? Honestly, there is no one-size-fits-all solution Correct. and everybody finances, planning, requirements, all these are different. Even the requirements for searching for a house can take up to one to two months. Mm. So, uh, this is why we decide to address this problem here today so mm. that uh, but whatever that we are sharing is just very generic concept. So, please don't take everything we say 100% and just follow whatever we are saying mm. because mm. we cannot take any uh, responsibility because we haven't really seen what is your, 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 your situation right now. Mm. Yeah. So if you want to find out more, uh, feel free to reach out to any of us. Uh, we are very strict in terms of our timeline planning, and That's we right. make sure that <laughs> everything is accounted for before you even start the search. <laughs> yes. So I think we have come to the end of this episode. Mm-hmm. So. That's all. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. That's right. <laughs> Bye.